Hello, everyone. And we are here uh, with the third episode of uh, Gimara's innovation journey. Previously, in two episodes, we have talked about uh, uh, basics of innovation, and we have tried to connect it with the uh, Gimara's overall uh, strategy, or we can say how Gimara worked or how they have developed the product. But now, in this episode, we are going to talk about uh, mainly uh, what are the next steps that uh, can be seen as a strategic uh, advantage of Gemara. So today's topic is uh, innovation uh, strategy of Gemara, but we want to know a little bit first about uh, Maria, the founder of Gemara and co-founder Raisa Haikala. And we want to ask them that what are their opinion about uh, innovation strategy or strategy in general, what they want to say, or then we will move uh, towards Gimara's innovation strategy and try to explore. So please, Maria. So uh, actually, these questions were very difficult <laughs> for me beforehand, but uh, uh, strategy is some kind of organizational plan or method that uh, achieves the goal you want to achieve through concrete work steps. And it includes some kind of choices, activities, tools, how you reach your co goal. So how, how to do things. Yes, and I, I would add probably about the strategy of, of Gimara and the innovation strategy. Uh, overall about the strategy, I think in the beginning it was more and more about making the business plan, answering the questions for the business plan and doing it. Not so much thinking what we are doing. Uh, because you need, need to uh, get from the stage of only planning things to actually doing things. So I would say that in terms of strategy, yes, there was some, but was it followed all the time? No. Yes, and if, if we talk about innovation strategy of Gimara, so I think Gimara, Gimara gave birth to innovations, but strategy work along the way wasn't Gimara's strongest, strongest point. Yes. The goals were achieved because of very long experience that allowed for uh, I, I think we have had some implicit, implicit hidden strategy behind it, but even though to the whole process was never written open until now afterwards, and strategy was, but it was kind of uh, some kind of hidden information that we really had. And so if if uh, I I would like to ask like. We have talked previously in two episodes about innovation management. And when we talk about innovation management, uh, obviously there was innovation man going on and innovation was managed somehow. But have you felt at any stage that there was like clear sense of direction? So there was a feeling of it even, okay, I am not asking like there was some written document and there was some cookbook that you were following. But if there was sense of direction or not, if that existed or not? This is a very good question. Maybe I will start replying to this because I remember that I was criticized also by Maria about the direction when I was all the time saying that we need a direction. We need where, where we are heading. We were heading somewhere, but also uh, kind of what, and I think Maria was right about this. That when you are doing something new, when you are creating something new, you don't necessarily know what is there, what is the direction. And um, so, yes, there, there was direction, but it kept changing. In a way, it still was the same, but it was so vague that I, I didn't understand it as a direction. Yeah, yeah. And I, I would like to add to this that I, I, I think that uh, we had... Uh, I, I felt all the time that we had direction, but because we had so much doing in, in our other duties, uh, we, uh, we somehow uh, thought that we know about other things, but we didn't 
we were not on same map and um, uh, somehow we had uh, same goal uh, mm. in very many issues but deeper uh, our our uh, way and how to do it it came from different point of views and and different starting points and i i think at this moment uh, it is uh, we are we are uh, ready to talk about some strategy of it because now we have a little bit more understanding and tools but uh, in this this situation we we couldn't because we we didn't have common understanding even even we somehow in uh, 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 we we had it, uh, but it was not deep. Mm. Yes, uh, it's not open. <laughs> it 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 means like it, it is quite clear that there was sense of direction. There there was some awareness about it. So we can say that there was a strategy. There was a vision. There there was some goal and. Obviously, there was not some book or like going by book or cookbook, uh, how this strategy is going to work. It was not in the written form, but there was sense of direction. So we, we can call it uh, uh, as a strategy or innovation uh, strategy or something equivalent to that. But when we go towards uh, in the academic terms or by the book, innovation strategy uh, comprised of three parts in which we do first strategic analysis then uh, obviously the word itself showing that we analyze different strategy and we analyze things and then second stage is strategic selection we select something that uh, what we are going to do and why and then the third one is strategic implementation so at third stage we implement what we have decided so three stages are there we are going to talk about today uh, the first one in which uh, strategic analysis um, what could we do and for that uh, uh, we um, characterize them in uh, uh, say to say like uh, uh, we call it as dimensions of uh, innovation and when we say dimensions of innovation and i, I will show the slide also uh, later on uh, there are four P's. So uh, there are four ways that we analyze uh, how the innovation strategy is going to work. Either it is going to be in product side, either it is going to be in uh, process side, either it is in, in a position or either it is a complete paradigm shift or it is a paradigm oriented uh, innovation. So the question is if keeping in view these four Ps, what do you think uh, if now you have to go back and think about it? So where Gimara was uh, in these four Ps, do you think there was something like that? Or do you think like you never thought about it, but indirectly have you now if you I ask you to think about it? Mm -hmm. Somehow all Gimara's products have, have uh, uh, the origin of them. We have tried to solve some customer's problem or, or fill some gap where uh, didn't exist good enough service. So, um, and also we have had very wide networks there. So I, I think that uh, we have had... Uh, if we think about products and uh, and uh, processes and position and paradigm, we, we really really uh, have had uh, implicitly all of these. But uh, this product making uh, starts from customers, and uh, and uh, process was going on with customers and all mm. networks and we we did all the time very big changes uh, and it was based on on feedback and then then uh, what was uh, this position I, I I think we 
have created some kind of uh, position in this field already. We, uh, people trust us and they, they ask us and, and uh, information, more information and, and they, they, um, they want to cooperate with us because we are, we are trustful. We have some kind of position. And also, also uh, we are not, uh, we don't have go, uh, we, we don't do things um, exactly what has done uh, 100 years. We, we have had our own way to do, especially in pedagogical field. So I, I think we have created in online learning new paradigms also. So... Yes, I, I agree. And I would say with all of these, like the products, um, I, I'm saying products because I think in the end we had quite many, at least they were <laughs> at the stage of an idea or, or somehow. So creating a new product was never an issue, kind of. And the process, like Maria said, it came along. So the process is coming only when the product is launched, when we are doing something. Um, it doesn't help if you think in advance how it goes. You can plan ahead, but you never can anticipate everything that will come along with the process. Um, then if we are thinking about the positioning, I would say that, yes, um, because it, it has... there. <laughs> There, is a, there has been a change within these years. When we started, for example, private teaching was not so common. There were some companies, yes, who were doing the private teaching and you could buy directly uh, language learning from a company, but it wasn't as strong as it is now. So I'm, I'm thinking that we were also, we were not alone, but we were pioneering in that positioning, making space for new kind of, uh, solutions for for um, immigrants problems uh, then para paradigm I'm seeing it yes uh, the same way as Maria is I'm seeing that it is shifting slowly at the moment it is a long process uh, as well so it takes a lot of time and effort to really change things mm. we are on the way yeah, and uh, actually, we we talked about accessibility in in our four dimensions: pedagogical, technological, lingual, and and also economical. Before it it came uh, fashion, and True. also micro micro learning was our base uh, in our first second when we started Kimara, and and before it, and uh, and also we had. Uh, decades understanding what works on online and mm. uh, may, maybe we, we have been some kind of uh, pioneers in this but uh, I, I think people didn't know what we are doing now mm. now everything is open and people yes. talk about same things and now now we can discuss with people because they understand what we true, talk about. true. That's very true. And also about positioning and paradigm, I'm seeing that it's so, um, it's those both maybe, I don't know, based on only the words I'm hearing. Afnan, you are much deeper in this. I don't know if I'm saying exactly what these mean, but at least what these words mean to me. I think these shifts are so big and they require common understanding, not only for the company, and not only for the company's customers, but uh, all in all, in the like everyone around. So that's why it takes so long time to have those kind of. Did we have everything? Or now we have. Yes, I think. But uh, some of them stronger than the others. Yes. Uh, or. In, if I must say, like you, you have defined in f four P's in terms of Gemara, and you have also given somehow examples also. And uh, when, when we talk about uh, position, uh, I think Mar Maria has tried to explain it a little bit. But uh, in in terms of position, uh, we mean like uh, uh, how we. Uh, changes in context in which the products are uh, introduced. 
so for example teaching uh, was already existed and uh, but you have positioned uh, it in the online market so this was a new thing so if we say so you you have put uh, a one dimension to it which was already existed so if we say that uh, when when you transform this position or you have taken a new position in this uh, product and as you mentioned that not so many people were doing it at that time so do you think that it was uh, incremental or it was radical at the time you really launched this online learning and uh, other products related to this strong uh, framework or pedagogy so it was in your opinion incremental or it was totally radical if any of you want to comment when positioning it as online I teaching i don't know if raisa raisa is uh, uh, agrees with me but uh, because in my my side uh, i had developed those type of products for a long time not not exactly this what we had at kimara but um, i i think it was incremental by my side but my background is different than rises and maybe maybe you have different opinion of this no i'm i'm actually i agree with you that it was incremental because um if, even if that was radical to me it doesn't mean that it was radical yeah. uh, for the others yeah. and um, if we are reflecting the whole environment what was that time yes you could maybe see that there were elements of radical as well but as many of those things already existed and they were just yeah so i agree with you it's it's in, it was incremental Yeah, and it, it was not only online learning, it, it was uh, pedagogical um, uh, point of views and the, it was also uh, our target group was not um, those people who are in integration trainings. Uh, they were working life people, people who were working yeah, in working life or, or studies in Finland and who didn't have... Uh, mm, Uh, I would say well enough or quick enough micro learning services at this time, and and also this uh, economical accessibility was not so good at this time. I, I think there was elements, both elements, yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, now, uh, when you you talk about uh, these four dimensions, and uh, as we know. Mm, if we are talking about dimension so they they are in four directions and uh, when we talk about these four directions and which are kind of uh, if we see it on a in the form of compass or on a map so they are like look like east west and uh, uh, on the south side so these are like a compass form so if we uh, and these are these are dimensions so it means that we are in some kind of uh, uh, space uh, which we can call it as innovation space so we are moving around in these four dimensions which are process which are product uh, which is like paradigm and position so we we are in the compass form and it is overall we can call it like uh, uh, we are exploring innovation space so as you mentioned with the examples already in the form of product you are exploring the Uh, innovation space in the process you are exploring the uh, innovation space and same with the uh, position and paradigm you are exploring the innovation uh, did we get the answer that we can talk about later like how much we are successful in that and uh, uh, obviously business is there product is doing well so that that is not the topic of this but we we can agree on this like we are in some innovation space so i will give you some examples related to four p's uh, and uh, first is the product and i will give you example that everyone knows you both also know about them these are established things so then you have to connect uh, gimara uh, in terms of similar if if you see uh, that 
really happened with you so i will give you one example and then you can try to think uh, and give me some example from gemara side like similar thing happened in gemara or not but in each example we will talk about two parts incremental or radical so first is uh, uh, product uh, dimension and in which i will talk about uh, one incremental innovation and one radical innovation and you can give example uh, of gemara once my example is finished like is this existed or not and you can name it so the first uh, example uh, i am quoting it from directly from the textbook so for the product uh, dimension and uh, the incremental side the example they are giving about windows uh, 7 and 8 and uh, which has replaced Vista and XP. And uh, we are talking about uh, uh, Microsoft uh, Windows and essentially improving on the existing software. So uh, they have Windows 95, they have Windows 98, and then there was incremental improvement. And if you remember uh, old computers, uh, uh, these new versions keep coming after two years, three years, and then they have removed many bugs. Uh, viruses and uh, it was more user friendly so this is the example of incremental product dimension and uh, uh, in the innovation space and if we talk about uh, in the radical uh, innovation in the product it is uh, toyota hybrid cars so toyota cars were existed and then this hybrid battery uh, uh, car for example toyota prius came in and uh, that was totally radical uh, innovation so the, their other product were improving and uh, seats were improved and driver improved airway were improved. but when Toyota Prius came in it was the first of its kind a hybrid car so it is a radical example of a product and then incremental I have given the windows example so can you give similar way in your product is there any incremental or radical or any of them or both of them Maybe I will start. And I, I think um, if we are thinking about the language language gym and we were talking about um, as one product, because I can see, like we said, that both elements. So within one product as a language gym, I see that there were uh, incremental elements of the online learning, the pedagogical side, they already existed, um, and, and also for, for whom we were making, they, they all existed. Uh, what was radical was really this gym thinking that you can join any lesson when it suits your schedule on your level. And that kind of thing I don't see anywhere else still this day. So I, I would say that that was radical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this design. And also, also I, I think uh, if we uh, think about those products we have done to other companies, for example, semi-literate design, yes, language, GUM, it, it is still, I, I think many people don't understand uh, what, what benefits are there really when it works fully. Exactly. And, yeah. uh, and uh, also, also uh, I, I think uh, uh, way how we have uh, actually ac accidentally created communities and uh, there is also elements how they work they they are some kind of different than any anyone some some kind of new that anyone don't have done so uh, this way and uh, yes this non non scheduled uh, language gym thinking uh, I think it, it is the most uh, most radical in in our products. Maybe mm. it is yes, difficult very, to think so quickly. Yes, very good. And if we move towards the uh, uh, second uh, P, which was process, and you mentioned it. So in the process, I want to give the example of uh, uh, banking service, and bank banks existed very long but uh, slowly slowly there was incremental improvement in the banking services so uh, at the customer end or inside uh, how they they manage things or then uh, these credit cards machines and atm slowly slowly this was uh, the change in process 
and uh, they have improved it and uh, they have uh, uh, it it is the example of uh, incremental innovation in terms of process but once the online banking came in it was a radical side of it 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 was never existed before they have developed a new system so uh, one side the process improvement in the traditional banking it is the incremental innovation example and online banking in the same sector is an example of radical innovation so uh, keeping in view this example is there any innovation in process how how you played around with the process uh, in uh, gimara it can be in terms of delivering the product it can be website or anything do you want to name something in the process innovation side i would say already uh, with this that the process was the customer um maybe customer relation management but also customer experience management yeah yeah and and that was incremental and that was constantly improving what was radical is it a process maybe i I'm, i'm thinking that the the way that the um, um how the product was paid because it was a monthly monthly subscription so i think that was radical yeah yeah and it, there is also um now i want to add uh, of uh, those um way it was not i before said that it was uh, the most um, radical was design but it was not only design it was pedagogical approach that you you can join to each independent classes True. I, i think this was also also something but yes uh, like raisa said that uh, really all processes have have been done together with customers and 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 they have been modified and developed with all partners we didn't manage to get rich but customers have have always been very satisfied and it it has given this power for us to develop all all, all the time more and more Mm. and and i would say in in pedagogical side definitely that was the process that was the radical process part um to to fit it in to the product so i see that they are kind of like mm. together combined yeah, yeah, as yeah. well they they are mm. yes they they are quite i think you have figured it out in a way like it, it, okay now we are reviewing this thing but obviously uh, it it is type of process improvement in incremental ways and radical ways and if we talk about the third p which was position so i want to give example of airline industry in that as well airline industry existed quite long but uh, uh, later on they tried to position uh, their airline in different classes so business class vip class economy class and uh, cheap airline concept was introduced so which make incremental uh, process uh, position change and uh, then if we talk about uh, the radical positioning uh, the example of uh, these american university especially the phoenix university the first time when they introduce uh, online courses which were only available to in class students so they really transformed their in house lecture to very big market of students for example they are doing this lecture uh, only like the person will get visa and go to the classroom pay fee and then uh, he or she can get education from that teacher but they had they were the first pioneers in that that they opened it for the people who we call it uh, uh, bottom of the pyramid so so many uh, in the first course so many people from india sign up for that course they have completed their course without actually going there so this was a very big uh, radical shift uh, in the same labor so if you have to do this type of positioning in terms of ag- incremental or in terms of radical or any one of them have it happened really in positioning your yeah. products your services yeah I, i think i can ask her first because this sounds very easy <laughs> yes yes our customer uh, group 
uh, was different. It, it was, uh, they were people who were so busy, they didn't have opportunity to join any trainings and, and we made it this way that it is easy to join. You don't need to register it. You don't need to know that you have now time to uh, study one hour uh, finish. Today you are very tired. You can join to easy class. Today you want uh, challenging class and you can join easily and you really can jump <laughs> quickly there. And also, also because we, we believe in educational uh, equality. We really want to offer service services to people who don't, for different reasons, opportunity to join economical issues uh, and time limit limitations or or uh, background things. Maybe maybe uh, because people who uh, were at work or they were in studies, they didn't have uh, any good services enough. There were services, but they, they were fixed and they couldn't join there because, for example, university services, uh, very often they, they were at that kind of times that you had all, already some other classes there and, and so on and so on. I, I think there was radi radical sides. Mm -hmm. Yes, I would like to add to this. I agree with everything you said, but positioning, I see it as well if... Um, I, I don't I don't know if that's correct way of thinking walking into that or navigating through this innovation space, but I see positioning as well to something that is not only dependent on us. We can position many products like you mentioned, this airline services. We can do that inside, but if we don't have the positioning within the industry overall, it's very hard to position the product and make the process. We, we can do many things inside, mm. but uh, is there a position for that? Because both of these examples that you gave, Afnan, were uh, in, in an industry that already existed. Language teaching as well has existed for forever. But, um, but the thing was when there was this radical part of the innovation to find positioning for that, and I think that that would have been or is still um, ongoing, ongoing to find that positioning. There is a need, but you need a lot of like explaining vocabulary, uh, verbalizing it in any ways and, and so on. Yeah, maybe we are at this moment in this situation that we we try to find new spaces. We we mm, yes. have uh, have somehow uh, left behind yes. our main main yes. product before, and we we are now targeting to the different things. But may I ask uh, also also one uh, thing of our old space. Uh, our target group was not only English speaking or only Finnish speaking. They they were all languages, and this this is also uh, some uh, point of view of this equality uh, interaction. And all languages are or are our where our <laughs> our field also it it affects to our positioning. We we were a little bit different field mm. there. But yes, it is. It is uh, both 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 points are very very much valid. And if we obviously we cannot compare uh, each business and with another business, and and we have also have to accept that uh, we are in uh, in terms of business we are in emerging market kind of thing. So this uh, obviously online learning online courses uh, in different forms they were available quite long already but uh, how good they were and uh, how they worked and uh, how much interactive they were how much recordings there were only in they call it as uh, online courses and there are many apps or things but uh, obviously when we talk about interactive learning interactive teaching interactive online teaching mm, that we are different uh, from the mm. so-called market available products which are available in 5 mm. 10 20 euro so, but it is also difficult to position the products when people are get used to hear this word exactly. online learning 
and then they see like why the price is high and why this price is low because it is difficult for them to understand that where you are positioning it and how much it can enhance the learning process that is another yes. discussion but we will go quickly towards the par- uh, paradigm and how we frame what we do and uh, for that i want to give example in the incremental side uh, ibm and we all know about ibm and ibm was one of the first computer makers and home pc makers and uh, uh, right now what they are doing they have done an explore paradigm shift and they are right now one of the biggest consultancy a company and they they do research and then they sell it to other manufacturers because of their long experience uh, in in their uh, computer building so which means that uh, they have uh, find, found their uh, uh, own innovation space uh, company is there they are in uh, making uh, uh, and nearly in the same business but paradigm is changed from a computer hardware manufacturer to a consultancy company and still making a lot of money and maybe because we can't see their physical devices we we think the company is over but company is not really over so this is the example of uh, incremental innovation on the paradigm shift and when we talk about the radical uh, innovation in, in which uh, all these uh, uh, search engines and uh, online softwares they they were there for example linux was there mozilla uh, mozilla firefox was there so but now what they are doing they are co creating co creating new services with their users they, they ask people to contribute and they try to build services with them this was not existed this is new thing like companies are using their customer to build things and then they are selling things so this this is the radical part of change in paradigm companies were there as you raisa has mentioned that they had the space but obviously it is a complete shift and many companies were not able to do successfully so do can you give quickly the example uh, of paradigm shift or you are not in that stage maria do you want to comment first I, I think we have already talked about this that we we have co-created um, all services together with with customers, but also also with uh, cooperation co in cooperation with other companies. So so I I think it is not a natural thing for us, but I I don't know if I answer. I I think the paradigm. change is happening at the very moment the kind of like the IBM um, you mentioned because now uh, it is again maybe for other people because i'm all the time thinking and reflecting what is happening out of outside of that innovation space of a company so maybe it's for um, difficult for others to understand what is kimara at the moment yeah and yeah. i think there is the yeah. there is the paradigm yeah. change yeah. Yeah. happening yeah. all the time Yeah, yeah, we don't want to do this old, and uh, we we carry this image online language school that we actually are not. We are more more uh, research based now, and we are like snake that change cover. And and uh, now at this moment we have our own directions, but uh, hopefully we can uh, cooperate and we get benefit from each others, and maybe target is is still. little bit same but yes, there is, is yeah and, yes. and maybe strategy will be stronger because we have a um, clear direction and maybe maybe our dream is crazy and impossible to implement but we are going towards mm. it so if if we say so thank you both of your comments if we say so uh, more or less uh, we gimara has as a company played around in this innovation space which is consisted of four p's and some some p's uh, gimara has really performed well and some uh, p's uh, gimara is still trying to figure out so this 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 looks like the message and uh, in the end i just want that uh, if both of you can give uh, one one quick tip about uh, the innovation strategy importance 
And if you want to tell any new startup someday, they, someone will watch this. Like, is there any tip for a new starter uh, for uh, innovation strategy importance or there is no tip? Yes, I have one tip. Hire Afnan for <laughs> consulting <laughs> your company. I, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Find your own Afnan and find your own strategy weaver. It, it speeds processes oh. and gives uh, opportunities to uh, operate very effectively and more productive. Uh, globe is so full of information at this moment. We, we can't know everything. I want to be specialist in my field, but I'm not innovation specialist and I'm not strategy maker. <laughs> so, so yes, so, this is good. Yes, right? the, the, this is good answer. And I must tell that this was not a paid question. So I didn't pay anyone <laughs> for this question. This was for me also a little bit shock. But anyways, obviously, we have products uh, related to this innovation. And we are working on that uh, uh, research side of it. And people can check our website, we will put the link also. So if you have any questions related to it, uh, and if you want to have some workshop related to innovation, so we we as a company also available. But uh, now uh, I will just end uh, this episode and we will come back with episode number four and we will go one step ahead in the strategy side. So for now, uh, have a nice week ahead, everyone. Thank you all. Thank, thank you, you. Afnan, and th thank you, Raisa. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye.